What's up, Magic players? It's Doyle, your host here on Doyle Prime MTG, where I bring you the latest and greatest in magic content that I can while still trying to have a life. This week, I want to go zombie tribal to coincide with the visit of Innistrad in Standard right now. I want to go in the Demir direction to keep with the classic zombie colors of MTG, but I also wanted to add my own personal little flavor from my favorite zombie horde in all of pop culture. The White Walkers from Game of Thrones. Forests, islands, mountains, plains, and swamps. The multiverse is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. There is a tingling in the spine, a faint sensation, as if a distant memory of walking from plane to plane. Our lives have been forever changed as if by magic. Embark with me on this journey to eternity. Experience the true power of mind over matter as we ignite your spark and traverse into the magic multiverse. So Wilhelm was going to be the original commander for this deck, and as my first zombie build, I was excited to add some flavor. Though Wilhelm doesn't quite match the flavor that I was looking for in my favorite zombie tribe, the White Walkers. That's when it hit me. The Night King had a much better match in terms of mechanical abilities. The Scarab God hit the mark for me. The Scarab God costs 3 blue-black for a 5-5 legendary god with 3 major abilities. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life and you scry X, where X is the number of zombies that you control. This will push us farther toward the victory each upkeep. It also has two blue-black, exile target creature from a graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. Basically embalming a creature from a graveyard, this is the pinnacle of flavor for the Night King. He takes a creature that has already died, and resurrects it as a soulless husk, and then uses it as a pawn of war. Also, the final ability, when the Scarab God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. It's not an ability that we, nor our opponents, should forget about. This more or less evades commander tax and makes it much harder for our opponents to lock us out of our commander. The idea here overall is a bit of classic zombie tribal to boost the power and abilities of the tokens that we make with Scarab God. And one key piece for added flavor. I did cut a few good zombies for budget reasons, so if you're interested in those, they're in the maybe board. As winter approaches, we will want to stock up our galley with some mana production. Soul Ring, Wayfarer's Bobble, and Myriad Landscape are each staples of mana ramp that go in almost every deck. Arcane Signet, Talisman of Dominance, and Demir Signet will each allow us to produce colors while ramping. Thought Vessel and Mind Stone will each ramp us up early, along with an additional benefit. Ashnod's Altar will allow us to use our dying zombies for mana production. Felwar Stone and Exotic Orchard will be included on the off chance that our opponents are either playing in our colors or even playing creatures that may have activated abilities that require some other colored mana input, so that when we resurrect them with the Scarab God, we are able to activate those abilities. Lastly, Crypt of Agadim will suffice as a budget Cabal Coffers, this tapping for a black equal to the amount of creatures in our graveyard rather than the number of swamps that we control. Card advantage will be quite simple in this deck, allowing us to utilize Mill for access to more cards also. Monastery Siege will allow us to loot at our upkeep, and while this is not card advantage, this is prime card selection. Also, our commander will allow us to pitch an expensive creature into the bin to embalm it later on. Forgotten Creation, Windfall, and Whispering Madness can certainly help to refill our hand while the sorceries also dump our opponent's hands into their respective graveyards for later reanimation shenanigans. Village Rite and Skull Clamp will allow us to draw cards off our dying creatures. Undead Augur and Midnight Reaper will allow us to take advantage of our dying zombies, drawing us cards and losing us some life. 
Factor Fiction is extra nice in this deck, since the cards that we don't choose are still accessible from the grave. Distant Melody and Graveborn Muse will each allow us to draw cards equal to the number of zombies that we control. Liliana Standard Bearer will allow us to draw for each of our creatures that died in the turn prior to the bearer entering play. Corpse Augur will allow us to draw a larger amount of cards on a death trigger. Will Help the Rock Cleaver, almost the commander to this deck, will also allow us to sacrifice a zombie at the beginning of our end step to draw a card. Will Help especially loves this Corpse Augur. Crypt Breaker will allow us to tap three zombies to draw a card, and Hordewind Scab will allow us to draw a card for each opponent dealt combat damage by a zombie, while also giving all of our zombies flying. God Eternal Bantu will join our Amonkhet Pantheon to allow us to sacrifice any number of permanents to draw that many cards. Gyre Reach Sanitarium will also join the card selection pool, as we are able to utilize any of these discarded creatures with our commander's embalm ability. Lastly, but certainly not least, Elegith Crossroads Augur will turn our commander's upkeep trigger into a massive draw ability, letting us draw X instead of scrying X. Controlling the game space is imperative in this build. Keeping our commander around isn't going to be super difficult, but keeping our key pieces around just might be. Access to the graveyard is key, so Traumatize, Maddening Cacophony, Mesmeric Orb, Court of Cunning, Altar of Dementia, Stitcher's Supplier, Master of Death, and Sphinx's Tutelage will each assist in piling up the bodies in graveyards for our reanimated army to begin to take form. We will also include Words of Waste so that we can turn our excess card draw into forced discard for our opponents. This could potentially triple our card advantage if each discarded card is a creature card, though since our opponents will not want to give us fuel, they will have to choose between keeping their removal spells in hand or keeping their creatures in hand. Assisting our Night King in reanimation, Stitch Together, Persist, Port of Carfell, and Ghoul's Night Out will each help to put Gravelane creatures back into play under our control. Coffin Queen can also help us reanimate things repeatedly, exiling them if she becomes untapped or if we lose control. Cleaver Scab will let us double up on a zombie token, sacrificing a zombie to make two token copies of it. Scourge of Neltoth and Carrion Feeder will also allow us to sacrifice creatures at will. And the Scourge is also included for a massive dose of flavor as Viserion the Corrupted. Lazatet Plating allows us to protect ourselves and our creature from targeted removal while making us an extra zombie for us to utilize. Fleshbag Marauder will cause each player to sacrifice a creature upon entering the battlefield. Infernal Grasp and Snuff Out will allow us to destroy a creature, while Noxious School can wipe away our enemies' armies. Finally, Training Grounds will allow us to cut our commander's activation cost in half, doubling the output of corrupted creatures. Closing out the game will consist of giving our Embalm tokens buffs and abilities with some zombie tribal gems. Wand of Orcus will allow us to generate many zombies on combat damage. Ghoul Collar Giza will generate us multiple zombies based on the power of a sacrificed creature. Field of the Dead will allow us to generate zombies on a landfall trigger, if we have seven or more uniquely named lands. Unbreathing Horde and Diagraph Colossus will each enter as large zombies later in the game, allowing us some beaters slash blockers for controlling combat. The Colossus will even generate us zombie tokens as we cast our zombie spells. Death Baron, Blade Stitch Scab, and Diagraph Captain will each give a buff to each of our zombies, two of which also give Death Touch. Gleaming Overseer and Eldrazi Monument will each give evasion to our team as well, and the monument even gives a little buff. Lich Lord of Unks will not only produce zombies over time, but also has an ability that lets us repeatedly drain an opponent for life equal to our zombie horde. Paradox Haze will definitely let us scry more, but the main purpose I included it here is to double the life loss trigger, creeping our opponents closer and closer to defeat. 
Finally, a surprise our opponents will never be ready for, Buried Alive, will allow us to search for up to three creatures and slap them into the bin. Filth and Wonder will serve us quite well here, giving all of our creatures flying and swamp walk from the grave. The lands in this build will focus on synergy and color fixing while not leaning away from the flavor. Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, will assist our filth in making our creatures unblockable. For color fixing, we have Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Choked Estuary, Darkwater Catacombs, Demir Aqueduct, Drowned Catacomb, Ice Tunnel, Shipwreck Marsh, Sunken Hollow, and Watery Grave. We will also include an Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse to find our one basic island and one basic swamp, leaving us room for six snow-covered islands and nine snow-covered swamps. Snow-covered nice. That about wraps it up for this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed the video. You'll find the link to the full deck list on Archideck.com in the description, complete with a maybe board. Let me know in the comments below if you would take this deck in a different direction, or if there are any key includes that I missed. Cheers, and happy casting! If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, and also share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like these, or hear me ramble about how to navigate this magic multiverse, go ahead and click that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest from me, Doyle Prime, and the happenings throughout Magic the Gathering. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next video.